Three, two, one. Welcome to the SaaS Poll Show. My name is Michael Bertoni, and I'm the founder and CEO of SaaS Talent. And it is unbelievable the types of guests we're getting on the SaaS Poll Show. This is amazing. So we got a multi founder here. He had a, he's in a company and he's like, I want to do something else, right? I want to do something else. So amazing. Let me introduce everybody to Jason Alvgani. Am I saying that right? Alvgani. So he, perfect, it, right? Jason Alvgani. He is the current co-founder, COO and head of product at Indy. He's been doing that for almost five years. He's crushing it over there. And then basically he's on the board now and he's like, why don't I start a new company, JellyPod, right? So we're going to learn more about that today. And it is so awesome to have you on the show. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm really happy to be here. Yeah. So awesome background. Like I said, everybody listening to this multi, you know, I don't know if you already have an existing exit. I didn't look on that, but you know, whenever you're building a company and you're the co-founder, the CEO, and head of product, and now you're saying, hey, I want to build another company, right? I mean, you're you're crushing it. So congrats to you and your success. Um, but what I always like to start with is the superhero backstory, right? So your journey, right? So I don't know if you want to start like journey to indie or journey to jelly pod, but like what got you to where you are today? Everybody has a unique backstory, I love to hear it. I love superheroes. So let's get into it. Let's understand yours. Yeah. Um, awesome. Well, you know, the, the beginning of my story takes me back to uh, the SFA area. Um, I started my career in tech. Um, I started off doing digital marketing at Google, uh, Chrome for uh, uh, Chrome for meetings, um, and then progressed uh, deeper and deeper into marketing, into growth marketing at venture back startups. And then eventually that led me to leading marketing at an AI cybersecurity company, fraud company, um, one called Bolster, one called Dodgeball. Mm. But throughout this time, I've always been very passionate about entrepreneurship. And um, I started a venture back company in 2020 called Indy. Um, it's an HR company that helps very large enterprises manage their uh, internal employee communities. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm really excited about today. Uh, today, I'm one of the co-founders of JellyPod. It is a consumer SaaS app. So I've been in the B2B world for a while now. Um, really excited, really passionate about consumer and really want to, you know, um, to make something big there. So uh, we created JellyPod. Uh, it's a yeah. iOS app uh, that creates daily personal podcasts using AI. Love it. Um, based on all of your favorite news and interests. So you just tell it what you're interested in, what you like, what you're passionate about. Every morning on your commute, it gives you the... Uh, Gives you the rundown. No, I love it. I mean, that's where we're heading, all right? I mean, so the radio, I wouldn't say the radio is dead, but eventually we're going to hit a button and it's going to be radio, it's going to be podcasts, it's going to be everything. So that's where I think the future of commuting is going. So I think you're you're ahead of the game there. So tell everybody about JellyPod. What's, give us the elevator pitch, the value proposition. And again, I love it, uh, B2C. Right. I, I love what you're doing there. It sounds amazing. I'm I'm definitely a user. So check it out. Let us know. How what does that look like? Yeah. So at the highest level, um today, especially with AI content generation, people have way too much content to consume. It's right. just sort of overwhelming. There's too many sources, too many people to follow. Um, and people are sort of, you know, constantly missing out on things that they care about. So we made an iOS app that, that kind of goes on the other side of that. AI is helping a lot of people create content. We want to help people consume content. Mm -hmm. So we made an iOS app. It, it, uh, today, the first form factor is a daily personal podcast, but we plan on having lots of different types of content that, that gets generated. But it's all just on the back of the highlights of your day's content, right? So if you're interested in AI, you're interested in tech, you're interested in a certain kind of uh, politics, you're interested in um a certain kind of writer who writes about uh, food in new york or something like uh no matter how niche no matter how diverse we know all of your interests and trusted sources and we create the content that you care about no i love it i love it so how does it so tell everybody how it works i mean let's everybody who's listening to this if you're listening you must download jellypod you must if you don't we're you gonna, must we're we are going jason and i are going to be upset we're going to email you we're going to say why didn't you download it 
but no, so tell everybody mm-hmm. what happens when you download. Is there a cost? Is it free right now? So give up, give everybody the uh, lowdown. Totally. So it is free to download, free to use up until a point. And then our power users uh, have a paid tier that grants more sources, mm. longer podcasts, more topics. Um, but uh, yeah, so like r- right now, sort of the hero use case, um, we have a lot of users that are in leadership, in like AI, in engineering, mm. and even in sales. So like oftentimes VPs, heads of sales, people who are often doing AI sales or building AI products, um, kind of a sweet spot. So what you do is you download and immediately there's a a very light onboarding. um, And then in the onboarding, there's a section that asks you about all the sources and the interests that you have. So like one screen for interests, one screen for sources, Mm -hmm. sort of one click, I'm interested in AI and business. I like Morning Brew. I like the New York Times and I like Rundown AI. Tap, tap, tap. You finish onboarding and then every morning or whatever time you set, we generate a podcast for you. It's just as simple mm-hmm. as that. Um, but what we found is uh, sort of our power users uh, want a lot of sources. You know, there's like, they have like eight AI newsletters. They've got three, you know, like, like major publications. They've got a few niche writers that they love. So all of that leads to, you know, having like 20 sources. So at that stage, uh, you have to pay $7 a month. Got it. Got it. So where are you aggregating from? Is it all the usual sources? Is it Spotify? Is it, you know, Apple? Is it Google? Like, so where, where are you, like, so where, where are you aggregating your data from to give them something that's great? Totally. Yeah. We are like, we allow sort of two, two ways to, to hook in content. We have a fully automated approach where we've pulled in uh, like a lot of sub stacks. We've pulled in a lot of RSS feeds Hmm. Um, basically anyone that, that is trying to project their content outwards, we've enabled that, uh, pretty seamlessly, but then some people have very niche level information, uh, in their email inboxes. Hmm. So we also have a, a, you know, like newsletters that come from, you know, like, like not from a sub stack, but from a different kind of publication. Um, so we also hook into, uh, into your emails, the ones that you, uh, the ones that you pre-configure, uh, to also get content that way. So we're sort of this two pronged approach of going out on RSS feeds and, and public feeds, but then also enabling you to hook up uh, the most, you know, personally relevant content that exists in your inbox. Yeah. I mean, uh, this is a no brainer, right? I mean, for people who consume content, I mean, so I'm wondering, is there anybody else doing this right now? I mean, is anybody else doing this? Well, I mean, there's like news. I know there's like news stuff that I can do, but yeah. What's, what's the market look like right now? Yeah, I mean, there's, it's, I mean, as we all know, right, AI has caused every single, you know, every leader at every company, especially in technology is thinking about how to, you know, incorporate AI. And as such, there's also, you know, a huge explosion of different companies uh, tackling these problems in different ways. So you have like, in, in a, a distant competitor, you have each publication is trying to create AI podcasts off their content. Mm-hmm. So like the New York Times will create their own, you know, personalized podcast but it'll only be limited to their content. So a lot of those kinds of publishers are doing sort of AI just for their content, but we believe that consumers want, you know, reach that goes beyond any one publisher or any one brand. Um, And then we have some AI, some interesting AI competitors. Um, One that people have heard a lot about, I think is Speechify. They were one of the ones, they were one of the first companies to really go text to speech and, and, and start to create audio that was fun to listen to, that was pleasant to listen to. Um, But we believe that um, automation is really the way to go. So with with a tool like Speechify or many of the other AI uh, audio products, you have to tell it what you want to listen to. You have to tag, you know, you have to enter it into uh, an app. You have to tell it um, a particular file. And every time you want that, you have to indicate it. So every time you want to consume something, you have to do a little bit of work. We believe that you should just do the work at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then for the rest... And then, and then from, from, from there on out, you're just getting this sort of highly personalized content on demand. It sort of happens um, the same way that we're used to, right? Like um, imagine if every time you turned on the TV, you had to like pick what topic you wanted it to make you a broadcast about. I don't know. Right. Um, so automation, a huge deal. 
But then one of our secret sauces um, is content processing. So it's actually not trivial to create audio that sounds pleasant. Right. Um, and it's not just about how it sounds, the voices, the realistic nature, the pauses. That's all well and good. But just the act of writing a script even is a, you know, a tough challenge. Um, and that's what we're really proud of. We have a, like a sort of a network of, little, of AI agents that handle certain parts of that process. Hmm. You know, the researcher, the script writer, the editor, and all these different processes handle this thing, um, you know, at scale. Yeah. So very, very interesting. I want to understand, just make sure I understand. So are you bringing them unique content or is it, or is it, that's what I'm, I think I'm hearing that you're bringing them or, or is it like content that you found specifically for them or for me? Okay. Got it. So it's that. <laughs> yeah, okay. totally. We're not in the act of like a creating content. And we believe that like most content creators, publishers have a, a suite of tools that are being made for them uh, to scale out their content production. Um, but we believe that the consumer side is, is, is being overwhelmed, right? I mean, just think about our inboxes and how they have, you know, 10 X over the last few Crazy. years, our Twitter feeds, our Instagram feeds, uh, everything, our LinkedIn feeds, the content is just exploding and AI is, is assisting that, but our, our days are still 24 hour days, right? You can't listen to more stuff, even if 10 X, if there's a 10 X increase in, in generation. Yeah, what I'm finding immediately with AI, because uh, we, we have two strategic AI partners we work with and we bring them to clients, people don't trust anyone, right? I mean, basically, it's like it's like people are like, they don't trust that you're real until I guess you prove to them that you're real. And with all the content that's out there that you're bringing, like if you, if you have all this content, you have all this information, then you're serving, I'm sure your AI is serving things that you know, I've been there, done that, been that for a long time. I'm sure that's in your algorithm because what I would hate is to get data that get stuff that isn't, you know, it isn't great. You know, like, like if the AI can somehow figure out like this guy's full of crap and this guy, this guy's real, right? This guy's real. This guy's, man, eh, this guy's okay. Like that sort of thing. But that's one of the use cases that I'm seeing is just, there's so much information how do I consume the right information and how is it good? Like, how do I, how am I prove that it's good information? Right. So I don't know totally. if you can handle that at all. Yeah, no, I mean, I think there's a, like so many parts to that overall like umbrella problem that you just described. Um, and, you know, just, just, just to name off a few example, right. There's bias there, is, you know, there's, there's bias, there's fact checking, but then there's also, you know, more consumer focused things like um, hearing the same thing over and over again across different sources, right? Some some news happens and everyone says the same thing and you're over you're overloaded with like, you don't need to hear about the story 10 times in a row. Um, you're just burning time. Um, so there's a lot of these little pieces that add up to, um, okay, how do I get this quality thing coming to me? So we're trying to tackle those all sort of one step at a time. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, because I guess what I've been thinking about a lot lately, and I'm sure a lot of people are, is how, how do I become a better thought leader, right? So in my space, totally. right? And like, there's no way to do it. You know, I mean, there's no like, hey, this is how you become a thought leader, right? It's like, it's like, basically, so it'd be cool. I'm just throwing out ideas here, but it'd be cool if I could would understand like maybe there's a thought leader index or something that somebody, there's all these data points that say, this guy is, is true. This guy isn't true. This guy, you know, you know what I'm saying? I'm just throwing out ideas. I love, I love what you're doing. I definitely want to download it. I'm going to download it. I'm going to download it. So great stuff, but let's keep going here. We talked about what sets your company apart. I don't know if you want to get into anything more specific and kind of hone in on that for everybody listening. So why, Jelly Pod, right? So let's let's sum that up so you can use this content. Why Jelly Pod? Why should people go out and download it right now? Um, if you are a busy person who uh, cares about staying up to date on sort of like the bleeding edge of your field, whether it be 
you know, uh, whether it be HR, whether it be the latest news in recruiting, the latest news in AI, technology, if you care about staying up to date in a convenient way and you're just too busy, uh, then Jolly Pod the right, you know, the right place to go. It's a huge time savings. Um, our, our users love it. Some of our earliest users are still, you know, paying $7 a month. Um, so we're seeing great retention of our oldest users. Hmm. Um, so, um, yeah, that, that first and foremost, if you're a busy person and you care about staying up to date, try Jelly Pod. Nice. So challenges, right? So what were some of the biggest challenges that you've had to overcome? I mean, I see here that you've been for a short time, a short period of time, you've had Jelly Pod, you've gotten it launched. So what have been some of the major challenges you've had to deal with and had you overcome them? Yeah, uh, this is sort of an, an, an interesting challenge that I've had, that I experienced, especially in the early days of technology, and that is juggling, um, like the VC pitch, where you're trying to to sell a vision that is years down the line, with very narrow, like next step prioritization, mm -hmm. next step experimentation. So the thing you're often selling this this grander vision is not that useful in taking the very next step. Right. So just juggling that, uh, you know, the, those two opposing sort of product pulls um, has been one really big challenge. Um, and then my second challenge is, uh, and this is probably, you know, an issue that everybody faces, uh, everyone who's listening, um, is just analytics, uh, the limitations of analytics. Mm -hmm. So like we'll experience like a growth spike that'll just happen, you know, on a random day. And the amount of time it takes to figure out if we can figure out how exactly that happened and, and how do we, you know, so that we can do more of it um, is, is, is often one of the biggest challenges. And there's just limitations to what, how, you know, how you can track someone is off of your properties or, you know, so it's very difficult. Um, but, you know, it's a fun problem to have, to have a growth spike that you don't know where it came from. But yeah. Yeah. One of my clients, actually, one of my SaaS clients does influencer, has like an influencer marketing platform. Right. Where I'm sure there are people that are telling people about Jelly Pod. And then all of a sudden it's like, you know, like it just. <laughs> so maybe that's something to look because I'm sure you have users and then you have influencers and you have people that are just saying this is amazing. Check it out. And then all of a sudden, like 100 people download or a thousand people download or whatever. But uh, yeah, what are you up to? That's that's interesting. So what are you up to right now? So what are you up to in terms of people that use it? Active users? You know, as yeah, we have to free to paid. What does that look like right now? We have a little over two thousand users, nice. um, and uh, the the paid numbers uh, are like about ten percent conversion off of those people. Nice. Um, and yeah, we're doing a lot of experimentation right now with uh, things like share functionality, with um, like gamification in some ways. Um, so we're really trying to find that sweet spot of what is like a really viral use, like a, a really viral growth lever. Um, but right now we're sort of at a stable kind of growth curve um, and just looking, you know, excited for that next big kind of step change. Yeah. I mean, with uh, it's really interesting with B2C, uh, I forget what the email provider was. They were ultimately bought by Microsoft, but that viral, Hotmail? what's that? Hotmail. Yeah, the viral loop story, you know, where yeah, we, yeah, yeah. The, the PS I love you, where they included they included PS I love you to uh, like sent from Hotmail in the uh, ends of the remote. Yeah, I mean, it, it inspired, I think, um, what people probably are very used to nowadays is the sent by iPhone. Um, right. the, yeah, so like, you know, that strategy was definitely cribbed from those Hotmail, Hotmail days. Yeah, I mean, incentivizing advising people to share you know, your platform, like somehow incentivizing it to share and putting it like in social media or wherever, you know, it's like, but no, it's, it's awesome. So in terms of talent, people, how do you look at that? I mean, it's very, you have probably a very interesting story around because you have indie as well, but what are your, what are your considerations? Like, so talent, people, how do you look at that? Yeah. Um, I think the early days recruiting, is so network driven um you know like if you're if you have to cold cold message somebody uh the chances of them you know resonating with this brand new company uh are very limited so you really have to lean uh yeah you have to lean on the people that you know and then maybe one order of magnitude or one order of one degree of separation outside of that 
<laughs> excuse me, sorry. Um, so, you know, that involves staying up to date with old friends, past colleagues, um, and really anybody that uh, I'm excited to work uh, you know, with again, that, I, you know, I, I've, I'm very fortunate to have worked with a lot of incredible people over the course of my career. Yeah. Um, people who just sort of surprise you, you, you know, who, and those are the people that you have to make sure that, you know, it's, it's very easy to grow apart. You move to Seattle uh, and, uh, you know, and, and life changes. I recently had a kid um, recently, nice. so that changes everything. So, but yeah, uh, the, the key is just to stay up to date, um, you know, uh, with the network and then, and then grow quickly. So do you have any thoughts for the audience around people, like just in general, because you were the co-founder CEO of Indy. So just how you should look at people, you know, any words of wisdom around, you know, just people in general, thoughts around teams, that sort of thing. Totally. I think one very underrated quality uh, in people that is often overlooked in lieu of like hard skills is empathy. Um, and okay. I think the number one thing uh, to look for in any in any role um, is empathy. And, you know, that's great for culture and all, but it's I think it's great for, I think it's very important for business because I think that an empathetic engineer is someone who cares about their users. An empathetic recruiter cares about their candidates. An empathetic salesperson cares about their customers. Love it. Um, and when your team cares, they do the little things right. And when they do the little things right, then that builds trust and trust leads to empowerment and an empowered team at the edges is where innovation comes from, in my opinion. So nice. I know I love, I love that. I've heard empathy. one other person I've done, a, I've done about 50 of these now one other person said empathy. So I love that. So great thing. My, my girlfriend always says I need to be more, I, I, I'm working on my empathy every day just to let you know. She's like, you got you to be more empathetic. So this has been a great podcast. So two or three best piece of advice that you would give other people listening to this, you know, so people that are listening to this right now, are usually solopreneurs, you know, they're early startups, they're thinking about doing this, right They're They got the itch. They want to do a startup. So what, what are the two or three biz, biggest piece of advice you would give them? Yeah, I think the first one that I would give that I've just seen happen too many times is don't grow too fast. Hmm. Um, Sometimes the early, like from a headcount perspective, uh, you yeah, know, from a customer perspective, please, yeah, grow as fast as you can. Right. Um, but um, but from a headcount perspective, I see it so often. Um, well, I guess take, taking a step back, the earliest work I find is all about prioritization uh, mm -hmm. and experimentation. Right. So you, you, you got plenty of ideas, but it's like, what do you do next? And you kind of have to be ruthless in that because um, – like that's where you really have breakthroughs. Everything else can, yeah. can, can, can dilute focus. And when you scale too quickly, it unfortunately gets in the way of that. You think you could experiment more quickly, but you experiment more slowly. There's more inertia around experiments. And then you don't have to prioritize as much. You, have, you could just, you know, uh, it becomes very easy to say, oh, we'll just try, you know, this top slice of things versus like, what's the one thing that we all need to do? And we can need to really get convicted around this one thing. Nice. So I think um, yeah, growing too fast, uh, don't grow too fast, I guess. Um, have a healthy amount of like, I guess, hunger in your organization and a healthy amount of people doing a little bit more. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> and then um, the next piece of, I guess the empathy was, was probably a good piece of advice, but to add one more, um, yeah. You know, the one thing you said, which, which just try to help you, help you jog your memory here. What, uh, what Jason, Jason being a co-founder and a COO, I don't see that as much, right? I'm hearing this, I'm hearing this operational bent to some of the things you're saying, like, don't grow too fast. Like, don't get coming. And then you, the way, what you were saying before, what felt to me like I deal with this all the time. I need like a great operational leader in my company because process, process, like, okay, you, you, you're basically building a process and you, you, you've got to start building it. Right. And, and then you got to make it better. Right. So I, I didn't know if that would jog your memory at all, but, uh, but no, I mean, I love, I love your background because we don't get, you know, we either get the people who are sales or we get the people who are tech, 
but we don't yeah. necessarily talk to a lot of people who are co-founder, but they're also ops, you know, operations, you know, so do you, so this has been a great podcast. I don't know if you have anything you want to add, if that helped you at all, but it's awesome having yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, no, I appreciate it. I mean, like just a, like a, a one quick thing that that sparked uh, just purely on what you just said um, is I think it's, it's very important to have that connective tissue between those, those sales folks and those engineering folks. Mm-hmm. And if they're two, if they're two, if they're speaking two different languages, that, that that can lead things astray and it can lead to finger pointing. So just having that that core central connective tissue, whether it be ops, whether it be strategy, whether it be product, whether it be design, but make sure that they're that you're intentional about connecting people together. I think is also very important. Awesome. So it was awesome having you in the show. Everybody, make sure to connect with Jason Olive Ghani. I'm gonna. I hope I'm saying that right. And download Jelly Pod. Download it now. And uh, I'm looking forward to following your journey. So stick around for a minute. We'll debrief. But awesome having you on the show. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much. Bye, everybody. See ya.